It's the battle for the Mayor's Cup in Columbia, South Carolina, as the Gamecocks and Tigers get set to do battle. We are here previewing, predicting, and breaking down this game between South Carolina and Mizzou. Hello, everyone. I'm Chris Phillips. He's Dave Shoemate. Appreciate each and every single one of you tuning in. Make sure you like, subscribe, turn on notifications. Check us out via podcast, wherever you get your podcast. You can also find us across all social media platforms, as well as our website, secunfiltered.com. Com. This segment brought to you by our friends over at Prize Picks. Go to prizepicks.com, use promo code SECU at sign up to get $50 instantly when you play your first $5 or more lineup. That's prizepicks.com, promo code SECU to get your $50 bonus today. South Carolina and Missouri get set to do battle at Williams Bryce Stadium in a game simply known as the Battle for the Mayor's Cup. Will it be the Gamecocks snapping their futility against Eli Drinkwitz, or will Mizzou find a way to win their sixth straight in this rivalry? Again, we are here previewing, predicting, and breaking it all down. I am Chris Phillips, helping me do so. My good friend Dave Shoemate joins me once again. Dave, what's going on, my friend? Appreciate you taking the time and excited to break down this matchup with you. Yeah, I mean, this is a no-love loss game. These are probably the two coaches in the league uh, yeah, that probably, that probably do not like each other. Let's just say they they are not sending each other Christmas cards. There will probably be not any attending of one's funeral. Um, it, it, both these guys, Eli Drinkwitz and Shane Beamer, do not get along. So the the, the winner of this game is definitely going to go dance on the other one in the grave after here. Like you mentioned, Eli Drinkwitz has owned this series since he's been here. But I will say this is South Carolina's best opportunity to win one of these games. This is, what is it? Is he four? What, what, what is Drink? Four so, so Mizzou has won the last five in a row. Drinkwitz has won his last five in a row against South Carolina. Four of those coming at Mizzou. They the first State. one he won App State in 2019 yeah. against Will Muschamp's South Carolina Gamecocks. So it's been a lot of frustration against Missouri, a lot of frustration against Eli Drinkwitz, especially, Dave, from the South Carolina side. When you ask any South Carolina fan and they would tell you, they would at least say, hey, Missouri wasn't better than us any of those years, or a better program at least is the perception and the feeling. Again, do with that information what you will. I think Mizzou fans would obviously disagree with that. But either way, there is no love lost to your point. I think it's probably either Mark Stoops or Eli Drinkwitz. Those are probably 1A, 1B for Shane Beamer that uh, – there is kind of that that feud, if you will, oh, yeah. between those, which makes it for very, very entertaining TV and the post-game pressers and all kinds of different stuff. So either way, though, got a great football game upcoming this weekend, Dave, in Columbia, South Carolina. Of course, this being the battle for the Mayor's Cup, 4.15 p.m. Eastern time kickoff on the SEC Network there in Columbia, South Carolina at williams Bryce Stadium. Dave, South Carolina is a 12-and-a-half point favorite. Imagine telling someone in the preseason, Dave, that South Carolina would be a double-digit favorite over Mizzou when this game uh, approached. Over-under set at 44.5. The series history, Dave, Mizzou leads the all-time series 9-5, to five, but again, like we mentioned, Missouri is winners of five straight in the series, and of course, the last meeting was last year. Missouri won this football game 34-12 to 12 in Como a season ago. So, Dave, as we dive into the matchups and we dive in the game itself, that's where I want to start, Dave. This is a huge game. I'm not going to undersell this one. You've had a great year to this point if you're Shane Beamer in South Carolina, year four of the Beamer era. I mean, listen, you're already bowl eligible going in your final three games. A lot of folks talking about you could finish nine and three. People talking about the college football playoff discussion, which – that's a conversation for another day. But just like the fact you're even having those convos, Dave, you've had an incredible season to this point. But snapping this streak against Missouri, Dave, is really important, I think, for not just the program, but for the fan base. Because it has been incredibly frustrating. to. I mean, people look at Eli Drinkwitz from the South kind of perspective. He's a nerd. He's a dork. He's this. He's that. And from what I've been told behind closed doors about Mizzou people, like Eli Drinkwitz is actually like an assassin. He's like a silent killer. He puts on this dorky, but he's a killer behind closed doors. But really important game, Dave, I think, for both of these programs, just from SEC pecking order, perception purposes. I know Mizzou is 7-2 and two right now, but it feels like a 
a faulty seven and two to a degree. No, they're, they're, you, you, heard, you heard drink post game against Oklahoma. It's a, it's, a, it's just another the win against Oklahoma was just another notch on the belt on the way to the old playoff round. Yeah, it's 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 a perception right now, Dave, of South Carolina. They're one of the hottest teams in the country, maybe the best six and three team in the country. Mizzou, yeah, they beat Oklahoma, but maybe one of the more fraudulent seven and two teams, maybe the worst seven and two team in the country. So, like, I just think for perception purposes, not just nationally, not just playoff, but for these two programs, especially Dave from the South Carolina side, a program that's trying to take these steps forward and you're trying to capitalize on this great year you've had. It's going to be a really sour taste in the mouth, even with this year you've had and what you've done to this point, if you find a way again to lose to Missouri. Yeah, because, I mean, you, again, we talk about it. The film been like, South Carolina is playing better than Missouri right now when you go put on the tape and watch them. It's at South Carolina. It's like you said, you're due for a win in this series. Like I mentioned, the main key part here, though, is they are, right now, South Carolina is playing the better football. Brady Cook's out. You got Drew Pine, who overachieved some last week. We all picked Oklahoma. Didn't think – I mean, again, Drew Pine wasn't, like, phenomenal. Had three touchdowns. We got set up well. I, that's kind of where you start this game to me is, like, mm -hmm. man, what kind of success do you even see someone like Drew Pine having this week against, again, a very disruptive, phenomenal front seven group. The secondary is very opportunistic for South Carolina and Clayton White's group. Where, where do you see the plays being made? for Drew Pine here. And that, that, that's what it kind of keeps going back to me. So to your point there, I think if you're a South Carolina fan, you're just so hungry to get a win in this series. You've watched your team the last three weeks win three straight. Like you mentioned, Chris, probably playing like a top 15 team in the country right now. Um, and then you got a Missouri team who you don't like their coach, who you think you're better than. And I think you are rolling into your building with a backup quarterback and they're missing an offensive lineman. Connor Tolson is going to be out in this game as well. This is a game you're right. If you're a South Carolina fan, let's just say you lost this one but won out, you'd still be a little bit like, yeah, we're eight and four. But you, man, you'd just be befuddled with like what – at home. You'd be befuddled by like what is it about Mizzou that you can't win that? Like what is it? You know, like – I mean, at some point you just – you know, you have to tip your cap and say that guy owns us. But, I mean, just it'd be, it'd be a tough pill to swallow. You, Especially to your point, coming in shorthanded offensively. I mean, do we know for a fact Brady Cook, he's not going to play? Is that – we, it hadn't been said officially, but I, okay. I, mean, I don't think so. I mean, the guy's yeah, had a I mean, knee injury, then he had the hand injury. And yeah, I, I'm curious what the status is of Brady Cook. Even with Brady Cook, I think it'd be really difficult because, again, uh, I you, mentioned, you mentioned they lost an offensive lineman. I mean, South Carolina's front seven, it's one of the best in college football, Dave, not just in the SEC. I, I mean, with the athletes they've got up front, one of the most disrupted fronts. I mean, it's not just the front seven either. Um, at the back end with Nicky Minwari and Jalon Kilgore and DQ Smith and the corners have been really – the defense as a whole has been phenomenal. I mean, it, it, it's a great unit. And so to your point, let's just say it is Drew Pine because it probably will be. How in the world do you think he – you know, he like you said, he did some good things against Oklahoma, but this is a totally different beast in my mind. And I think Oklahoma's got a good defense, but this defense – at home, Dave, a game that the second half of this game is going to be a night game at williams Bryce Stadium, and we know what that place is like at night. Um, man, it's just hard to paint a pick. Now, here's what I will say, Dave. For Missouri, Luther Burden, Theo Weiss, you, you've still got some big-time weapons on the outside. Are they maybe able to get loose? You know, I recall last year, a lot of these, and I know the defense is different, but a lot of these same guys from the secondary, they were in that game, and and Luther Burden and Theo Weiss kind of got theirs. You know, they had their way. Again, totally different circumstance. But these are guys that can beat the best of the best in the country. So, like, if they're able to get loose, get behind the defense somehow, um, you know, I think Mizzou is probably, Dave, they're going to have to rely on explosives and score from far. I, I don't think Mizzou is going to be able to put together a 10- or 12-play drive against this South kind of defense. Now, if you have some coverage busts, some things down the field, maybe – and I think you need to find a way to get Nate Noel and Marcus Carroll going. But but again, Dave, it's just – And Nate Noel's banged up. Yeah, that too. So, But this South kind of defense, it, it's just – it's relentless, man. I, I, I It's it's hard for me, Dave, to see a path from Missouri to scoring, you know, you know what the 24, path is, 30 points. You know what the path is? Corey Batoon, the defense coordinator for Missouri, He, I think whether he wants to be or not – and I don't know this. I'm literally just saying that. Whether he wants to be or not – He's going to have to be aggressive because I think you're going to have to force some turnovers and get some short fields and yeah. shoot your defense. Maybe even have to score a, 
a possession or two. Just because I'm with you. I just – if Lenore Sellers and South Carolina on offense play turnover-free football – they're going to win the game. Uh, yeah, uh, that's just kind of the key to the keys to yeah. to, to, to success in this game to me. I mean, if they don't turn the football over, and again, Missouri is really not that great against the run as well. And Rocket Sanders seems to be back to 21-22 version of himself in Fayetteville. Man, I'm looking at it right now, Missouri in all games, not just conference games, ranked 12th in the SEC in rushing defense, giving up 133.4 yards mm. uh, on the ground. South Carolina sits there at fifth in rushing offense with 180 on the ground. But I feel like that's gotten better over the last couple yeah. of weeks. They're starting to get more creative with Dow Loggins. I, I, I feel comfortable in that. Again, I, I don't think the passing game has been that great for South Carolina really across. Like, just like the designed passing mm. game. A lot of it has been Lenore Sellers – just making people miss in the backfield, him rolling out, extending plays, and a corner or safety coming up, bailing on his assignment on his man, coming up to try to make the play on Lenore Sellers and leaving people wide open. I mean, that that's Dave, that's the key if you're a Mizzou defensively, right? You you gotta keep him in the pocket, and the first guy needs to be able to get him down. I mean, that, you gotta finish him. Yeah, yeah. You, you, you again, gotta finish him. If you, if to you do get that. Your, struggled to do if that. If you get your hands on him, you got to get it. You cannot let because once he escapes. Again, all hell's going to break loose because I mean, you, your guys can only, you know, you guys can only cover for so long, and then you get Josh Simon loose, you get Mazeo Bennett loose, you get you know all these other guys. Once he improvises, all bets are off. But to your point, keep him in the pocket. Once that first guy gets his paws on him, get him down, get them behind the sticks. I think that's the key if you're Corey Batune. Like you said, I think be aggressive. You you got to force the issue. Whether you really want to be, you're going to be like. Yeah, for us to, I mean, if you're Eli Drinkwitz and you're meeting like most coaches do, when you're meeting with just your coordinators, your offensive, defensive, special teams coordinators, going over like, hey, flow of the game, stuff like this, it's kind of like if I'm Eli Drinkwitz, I'm sitting there. You got to tell Corey between like, hey, man, I may, I know you may not want to be aggressive in this spot. That's not really who you are. At your you court. He yeah. is because he, he comes from Kane Womack and they're aggressive. But it, it's like, man, we if we have them pinned back in within the fit, 15, 10 yard line of their own 15, 10. I know you may not want to because you want to keep it in front of you, but you may have to go bring that six man because we need to force that turnover to get short fields to win this game, especially if it's Drew Pine. And I, I'm with you too. I still wouldn't feel great probably if it's Brady Cook factoring in. He's got a hurt hand and his high ankle sprain doesn't just go away. That's a long lingering injury. So, no, you're right. I, I think they're going to have to play a game within the game there, make some really good in game decisions. Eli Drinkwitz may have to go for it on a couple of times. He may not really want to. Yeah. It's like fourth and one, dude. We got the ball at the 40. I'd maybe love to play from field position, but we got to go for this. Like, we like, we don't have any other possessions. So, Missouri's going to have to take some risks, some calculated risk in this game, because I do think right now South Carolina is the head and shoulder better football team as we mm -hmm. speak right now in the middle of November. I mean, Dave, to your point about taking risks and playing aggressive, like, listen, we can we can laugh and, and kind of mock Eli Drinkwitz all we want, but, I mean – Dave, they are seven and two, and if they yeah. finish ten and two, they may have an argument. So, I mean, they're fighting for their college football playoff lives. I mean, they are. You know, like so. You talk about playing desperation. Yeah, you're. The, the whole convo goes away completely if you lose this game. So, if Eli Drinkwitz wants wants to be able to go back to the podium or go back to the microphone and say, "Hey, we're in the playoff hunt," M I Z. Well, you got to win this one. I mean, it, it's just, you know, nobody's getting in. Sorry, South Carolina. Nobody's getting in at nine and three, I think, especially Missouri, though. Missouri definitely in it. And I mean, I say for South Carolina, I mean, it's not a 0% chance you get in at nine and three. If you want to keep your hopes alive, you got to win this game, too. So it is a must win for both sides from that perspective, but especially Mizzou, who could still finish 10 and two. And maybe, maybe, Dave, not likely, but maybe still have an argument, yeah, you you got to throw the kitchen sink and everything you got at this football game. I mean, well, I, it's just – If you're Eli Drinkwitz, like you're a crystal skull, space, space, you may miss the playoffs. But, shoot, you won 11 games last year. Even if you were to win this game, this would almost solidify, at least in my opinion, you go win nine games. Like, I, I don't mm -hmm. know if you go – I think if you win this, you feel pretty good about Missouri finishing nine and three. And, hell, that's back really – Two good back-to-back -back years, an eleven-win Cotton Bowl season, yeah. and nine and three. You were, you were missing your quarterback for a lot, yeah. of especially at. I mean, you know, I don't say this to be disrespectful, but especially like at a Mizzou, where it's like you don't turn yeah. your you don't turn your nose up at a nine and three or maybe even a ten and two season. You just don't do that. So it's like you um, said, even Missouri didn't have a playoff to really play for. They still have a lot on the line from a program, not to steal right. something from Gus Malzahn, but like the trajectory is going up. Both these programs' trajectory 
uh, is going is going up overall. I'm with you. This is an under the radar game to me nationally, and an under the radar. Hey, it's a top game. 25 matchup. Both teams. Yeah. Are yeah. No, I mean, it's a really big game. Like you said, you factor in, you kind of got the WWE storylines that these two would piss on each other if they were on fire, too. <laughs> uh, Dave, from the South Carolina perspective, offensively, I, I am really curious to see if Lenoris Sellers, you know, continues to kind of progress. If you, I think he's been better over the last few weeks, been more efficient. Last week, great example of that. Didn't turn the football over, looked really good. Obviously, running game has been incredible. Rocket Sanders looks to be, like you mentioned, that form when he was at Arkansas. Um, Joshua Simon has become a star on this offense at the he's tight end spot. He's essentially – he's not a wide receiver, but you could call him – He's our, their top pass catcher. Wide receiver one. He's their top pass catcher, absolutely. Um, you know, do some other guys step up? May, does Nick Harbour maybe have a – you know, I Yeah, he's some catches here down the line. You, you sure. saw some signs last week that maybe he's starting to come into his own. I mean, this fan base would love – South Carolina fans would love nothing more than to see him come into his own and you start to kind of see the the return on your investment for the recruiting process, the NIL, all that good stuff. So the offense feels like it's actually starting to kind of take some steps forward, if I'm being honest, Dave. It's not perfect. It's not their strength, but it doesn't have to be. Just don't get in your own way and let the defense do work like you know it's going to. You're in a good spot. Dave, finally, before we get into predictions, I, I guess my big question for Missouri is just, if they can't handle South Carolina's physicality, because I mentioned that's the thing, Dave, to me, that's changed so much with this program from the first three years of the Beamer era to now, they're more physical. They're just more physical. A lot of that's got to do with personnel, but it almost feels like, too, there's been this mentality shift, this mindset shift, bringing in guys like Travian Robertson at D-line coach, Sean Elliott from Georgia State, who's working with the offense, you know, the job Luke Day has done, the strength and conditioning quarter. They're not having these crippling injuries. The physicality to me has totally changed. South Carolina, Dave, has become a football team. and We talk about them. They're going to punch you in the face. Does Missouri have that counterpunch? That's going to be yeah. my question. Uh, this one. I mean, CB, you look at the roster. I mean, it's an older defense. And I think people forget about that at times. This is a, outside of Dylan yeah, South Carolina, really young on offense, but they got veteran guys on defense. Yeah, this is a veteran defense that has played a lot of football in this league. Tonka Hemingway, TJ Sanders. I know Kyle Kennard hasn't been in the program, but he's played a lot of college football. Yeah. He's a redshirt Super senior. senior. Debo yeah. Williams. DQ Smith and Nick of M. Worry are not seniors, but they're juniors who played a lot as true freshmen. Played so essentially freshmen, they have as much yeah. rep as a lot of seniors have. Yeah, this is a very old South Carolina defense outside of Dylan Stewart. Like, I mean, Judge Collier, Jason Kilgore are old, but like for the most part, 75%, 80% of this defense will not be there next year. So again, I think it's just a very mature type of defense. It's like they really do have a confident swagger about them where they're like, the team kind of goes as far as the, us talking as the South Carolina defensive men, our defensive lineman, secondary guy, whoever you want to talk talk about, and then Lenore Sellers. I mean, that, I mean that, that those are the two things that stir the drink for South Carolina in this twenty twenty four season. Lenore Sellers improvising, making plays, reminding everyone of what Anthony Richardson should have looked like, and then South Carolina's defense having takeaways, scoring off those takeaways, and setting up that offense for success. So, Dave, let's move into our predictions for this one. I'll go ahead and start. You know, this is a game, as much as we go into it, Dave, and, and the spread is two touchdowns, and we kind of look at it. Like you mentioned, there, like there's no debate. South Carolina right now, they're the better football team than Missouri. I, I don't think that's a hot take. At no. least the way they're playing, they're a better football team, right? South Carolina, 6-3, and three, one of the hottest teams in the country. Again, I would say they're probably the best 6-3 and three team in college football right now. On the flip side, Missouri, 7-2. and two. Yes, they beat Oklahoma, but have looked very lackluster for most of the season. They've got blown out, and they're two big opportunities. Like, they've had two opportunities similar to this one. They've got boat raced both times. I'd probably call them the worst 7-2 and two team in the country. Maybe fraudulent is a good word to attach to them. Yeah. All that being said, though, Dave, you ask any South Carolina fan this week, they're terrified of this game. They're, they're, they may not admit it to you, but I think deep down they're like, oh, my God, there's real expectations on South Carolina to go out and win. And here comes Eli Drinkwitz. This, this, you can call him a dork. You can call him a nerd if you're South Carolina. But he's an evil genius that has continued to haunt you year after year after year. Dave, two years ago in this building. And it's 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 eerie how similar what I'm about to say is the scenario. South Carolina, they had won, I think, three or four in a row. They came into a game against Mizzou. 
in an afternoon kickoff. I think it was the same kickoff slot, 415. They had just gotten into the top 25 for the first time in a few years. Here comes Missouri. South Carolina's favored. You're looking at the game like, and this is before, obviously, Mizzou won 11 games last year. Like, you know, they're very 500. They're not great. South Carolina should win. And they laid an egg. And, and Mizzou won the football game. And you're just sitting there like, what happened? How could this happen again? So I think there's a lot of people within the South Carolina fan base. And I think a lot of folks with Mizzou that even with as bad as they played, Dave, I wouldn't blame them coming in this game with confidence because something we didn't talk about, you know, you mentioned the coaches don't like each other, but Eli Drinkwitz has owned Shane Beamer and his staff. He's well, really, owned Yeah, and you said staff. I'm glad you, I mean, he's owned staff. Clayton. He knows the holes in Clayton White's defense. And again, he's, before before anyone overreacts, there's holes in everyone's defense, guys. Right. There's not a defense you can call it shuts down. Hugh Freeze knows every hole that Nick Saban and Kirby Smart's defense has. The difference is sometimes you have the players to execute it. Sometimes you don't. And sometimes I think we give coaches a bad rap for that. But right. to Chris's point, Eli Drinkowitz knows the Clayton White defense like the back of his hand. Now, does this week, does he have the quarterback to go execute that game plan when the shots are going to be there? I lean no. But to your point, you're right, Chris. He's had success against Clayton White in the past. Right. I, I think the coaching, the the cat and mouse game, that showdown is one that uh, is one I'm excited to watch. Again, I just say from the standpoint of this game isn't as simple as I think it looks on paper. At least I think the, probably the two fan bases don't feel that way because of previous history, what has happened. That being said, Dave, it has been five long years for South Carolina fans, really six if you include this past offseason. It's been a long, long time since South Carolina beat Missouri 2018. You got to go back to the monsoon game, Michael Skarnecchia. A lot of frustration, a lot of missed opportunities. Dave, streaks are meant to be broken. This was one going back to January, Dave. I thought for one of my bold predictions for South Carolina, potentially this set up well. They could end the streak at home. It's going to be a night game, second half of the game. I just look at this game, Dave. And will I be surprised if Missouri covers and this thing is closer than folks are expecting? I won't just because the familiarity with both staffs. And I think, again, I think Eli Drinkwitz could come in with a really good game plan. Um, so I will not be surprised if it's a close game. That being said, I'd be shocked. And I mean utterly shocked if South Carolina lost this football game to Missouri. I understand the streak. I understand the trends. I understand Eli Drinkwitz owns South Carolina to this point. I get it. But as I said, strengths, streaks are meant to be broken. I think South Carolina's defense, it's not just one of the best in the SEC. It's one of the best in college football. I don't see a path for Drew Pine and company to have a day good enough to beat South Carolina. And I think offensively, you mentioned it. I think Lenora Sellers, improvising, getting out of the pocket. Corey Batoon is going to do all he can, but the athlete that Lenora Sellers is, the specimen he is, they've got the running game going now with Rocket Sanders. Like you mentioned, Joshua Simon has become a fantastic target at tight end. I don't think Missouri can go blow for blow, play after play, and match South Carolina's physicality from start to finish. Could this game be closer than folks are expecting? Maybe so. But I think at the end of the day, South Carolina, they're one of the hottest teams in college football right now. I think Missouri is fraudulent. And I think South Carolina at home, they finally in the streak against MIZ, knock Missouri out of the college football playoff conversation and get the win and essentially set up, Dave, maybe potentially a 9-3 and three finish to the 2024 season looking way too far ahead. Give me South Carolina 30, Missouri 20. I think South Carolina is coming into their own offensively. I think Lenora Sellers is getting better week after week. Rocket Sanders is running like one of the best backs in the SEC like we knew he could be. Uh, and then again, the defensive side of the football, it speaks for itself. They've got one of the best defenses in the country, led by that defensive front. They're going to give Missouri problems all day. South Carolina gets a double-digit win at home over the Missouri Tigers. Yeah, uh, I'll be short here. I'm just going to go 30-13, South Carolina. There's the, you're closer to the whole rivalry in this. I I, I I never worked in South Carolina or Missouri, so I never really felt this rivalry. The, so, uh, from that perspective, all I can go off is just watching the film. They're the better football team, South Carolina across the board. I, the only path to victory I really see for Missouri here 
is if Lenore Sellers has two plus turnovers, probably depending where they're located to deep in their own territory. I don't see that because I do think you can run on this Missouri defense. Brian Sanders starting to hit his stride a little bit. Uh, and then again, I just think Drew Pine just not going to have enough against a really good veteran South Carolina defense. Again, Eli Drinkwitz knows the ins and outs of this Clayton White defense. I just don't think he is going to have the artist this year to go paint his masterpiece against this defense. And the, the paint brushes are all torn up. The the rust is all over the wood. I mean, he may have to get a technical shot after dealing with this uh, performance on Saturday. I just, again, they don't have, they don't have the guys, the personnel to go into this one when you're playing with your backup quarterback on the road in a tough environment. And I just think South Carolina's head and shoulders better right now. Again, if you told me Lenore Sellers went and turned it over two or three times, we probably have a ball game in the fourth quarter. I'm going to lean. He's going to continue to only get more comfortable. Uh, maybe not even in the Dow logging system. I'm, I'm not overly fired up with him in that specific system, but I think he came into his own as a player, making plays, getting comfortable. Um, I just think South Carolina, better football team, better defense. Uh, keys, just turnovers. I just don't see a lot from uh, Lenore Sellers on Saturday. Give me South Carolina 30 to 13. So, guys, do you agree with us? Do you disagree? How do you see this one playing out when South Carolina and Mizzou do battle at williams Bryce Stadium? Guys, that's going to do all for us. Appreciate each and every single one of you tuning in. Again, make sure you like, subscribe, turn notifications, check us out via podcast where you get those. You can also find us across all social media platforms as well as our website, secunfiltered.com. For Dave Shoemate, I'm Chris Phillips. Appreciate each and every single one of you tuning in, and we will catch you on the other side. 